So, you want to collect data yourself? When designing surveys, it's really easy to get carried away by curiosity and ask too many questions, or even worse, questions that are irrelevant. This can result in a lot of data that you'll probably never use. Although the answers might be interesting, you need to make sure they will be, above all, useful. To make sure you collect the most relevant data, try to write down why you are collecting this data in the first place. What are your goals? How are you going to use the answers? First, put down all the questions you want to ask. Then, go through each of them and ask yourself, do I really need this data? How am I going to use the answers? If you are not sure, you should probably not ask the question. When designing a survey, keep in mind the persons who will answer it. Who is the survey for? Going through a couple of basic questions about your respondents will help you design both meaningful questions, but also choose the best tools and methods to distribute the survey. Now that you know who your target group is, you have to get a sample of that group. There are two types of samples, exhaustive and representative. The only example of an exhaustive sample is a census where all or almost all of the population is interviewed. But a census is typically very expensive, so most surveys use a subset of the population or a representative sample. Designing a sample to eliminate sources of bias and to represent the target population accurately is the key problem in designing a survey project. Keep in mind that the sampling methodology must be documented during the survey design process. There are two methods of getting a representative sample. Random samples, meaning that in a given population, every person has the chance of being part of the survey. And non-random, for example, a voluntary sample where participants choose to take part or a convenient sample where participants are the ones who are easy to reach for some reason or another. Unless you are doing a comprehensive and time-intensive research, chances are that you'll choose non-random samples. Don't forget to include your sampling methodology in your survey findings. When choosing a sampling method, it's really important to be aware of possible biases and try to avoid them. Here are some of the most common types of biases. Under coverage, which means there is an inadequate representation of some members of the population. Non-response bias, when many people chosen for the sample are unwilling or unable to participate in the survey. And self-selection bias, this is the opposite of non-response bias occurring in a voluntary sample when those who choose to participate are very similar to each other and thus not representative for the entire population. Bad survey design can also cause bias. Some of the most common mistakes are leading questions. This is when wording of a question may favor some outcome. An example of a leading question is, did you get expelled from school because of your religion? A better way of ensuring an accurate answer is to ask an open-ended question like, why did you get expelled from school? Social desirability, which means that people won't be honest if their answers will portray them in a bad light, especially if the survey isn't confidential. Now, let's move to the most interesting part. What types of data do we typically collect with surveys? First, qualitative data. This is everything that refers to the quality of something. An opinion, attitude, description, or experience, or an interview. And two, Quantitative data, which is data that can be quantified in numbers. In a survey, you need both. Now, let's go through some popular types of questions. The simplest question is a yes-no question. This should refer to a fact, not an opinion. Another popular question type is multiple choice. These allow survey takers to select one or more options from a list of answers that you provide. You should use multiple choice questions when you have a fixed number of options. Scales are a great way to capture qualitative data in a quantitative manner. They allow you to measure opinions, such as agreement or disagreement, quality, 
or satisfaction. Scales are very easy to misuse by asking leading questions and designing the scale badly. If you use scales, make sure that both ends are balanced. You should not have a scale that starts with extremely dissatisfied and ends with satisfied. You can also use open-ended questions. They allow respondents to write down their answers in a free, non-structured format. Be aware that open-ended questions are the hardest to analyze. If you want to extract meaningful information, you'll need to spend a lot of time cleaning the data. However, they can obviously provide extremely useful insights and it might be worth your time. Open-ended questions are a good way to beta test a survey. These can be changed into closed questions later. Lastly, demographic questions are an integral part of any questionnaire. They are used to identify characteristics such as age, gender, income, education, place of re residence, and so on and so forth. For example, demographic questions will help you clarify the difference between different types of workshop participants. Perhaps the workshop is more useful for participants coming from rural than urban areas. Typically, demographic questions are multiple choice questions. Try not to force people to provide an answer by including options like don't know or does not apply on each question. Let's talk about the structure of surveys and the order of questions. Make sure you ask the interesting questions where you want people to reflect first in your survey. Why? because people have a limited attention span and you should channel their full attention to the questions that matter. They can answer the mechanical ones about their age, gender and education at the end. So, first ask about attitudes, evaluations and opinions. For example, start with some scales and then add your open-ended questions that require some reflection. Then, ask about the hard facts like demographics near the end rather than beginning. Last but not least, make sure you create good feedback with your respondents. At the beginning, explain what the survey is about and how you plan to use the data. They will be more receptive if they understand what's going on, so teach them about data first. At the end, share the results so people can see what they contributed to and ask for feedback. Below, we have listed the most popular and reliable survey data collection tools.